Hey y'all, this is Culture Soup, where tech, culture, and business collide. It's a podcast that spoons up everything hot from social media. I'm your host, L. Michelle Smith, and each episode we bring you some of the most notable and not yet notable thought leaders in tech, business, and culture. The year was 2005. I'd come to the conclusion that while I loved my home church, it was time for something new. You know, when you're older, you kind of want to find your way. So I left Good Street Baptist Church, my home church, and I decided to visit Concord Church. When I arrived that day, I saw several people that I knew. At the time, we were still in what they call the legacy sanctuary. That would be the smaller one that we would outgrow. Eventually going to four services and wearing my pastor and everyone who served out. The goal was to get back to two or three services. So we would build. But in the meantime, there I am at the Polk Street location. And friends spotted me. One friend who I met working at the Fox affiliate at KDFW TV happened to be the pastor's armor bearer. The pastor had only been there, say, four or five years. He's a young guy, Pastor Brian L. Carter. And he was doing amazing things. Of course, sharing the word. He was a great preacher. But he always had a knack for the original. And there was something else at Concord Church that attracted me. The music director at the time. Her name? Gay Arbuckle. I remembered the name because it rang a bell. Yeah, I remember hearing about Gay Arbuckle Sneed and... Her writing a song called Miracles and Blessings. If you Google that song, you'll see everybody and their mother singing it. It's a very moving song. It's beautiful too. But that's what she was most known for at that point. She had fiery red hair and man, I'm telling you, an anointing to tear down the roof of that church just from singing. But back to my friend from KDFW TV, John Thompson. He's now a shooter, a photographer at the NBC affiliate here in Dallas. John was Pastor Carter's armor bearer. And when he spotted me, he went into overdrive. He wanted me to meet people the first day that I showed up at Concord. (laughs) The first place he took me into the music director's office. And there I met Gay Arbuckle for the very first time. John wanted me to meet her because he knew that I was a singer. And he wanted me in ministry right away. Well, I hadn't even decided to join yet, but that was a great way to persuade me. Over the next several years, I would join the Young Adult Choir I would join the praise team. And during those days, like I said, we were growing rapidly. So there were nine of us on the praise team singing behind Gay Arbuckle. But she always told us, always be ready to lead. And there were times when she would pass the mic. And we would be responsible, whoever she passed the mic to, for all three services. It was a workout, but I got to tell you, it was the best training that I had received since my vocal coaching in high school and college from a former Broadway singer, Donna Dandino. You've seen it written that I am classically trained, and you also seen it written that I am a member of the opera board. 
but I do not sing opera. Let the record show. Classically trained is just like saying I'm a classically trained public relations and marketer. Just trained in the classic way. Does that make sense? Right. So I've sang R&B, pop, jazz, seven-part harmony too, gospel, and praise and worship. Gay Arbuckle is a special, special spirit. She is not only talented, but she's gifted in training vocalist. And I can say that she has had the most influence on my sound to this day. Gay is also a national recording artist. And I should preface that by saying an award-winning national recording artist stellar nominated recording artist and I had the privilege of being on her first project that was recorded there at Concord it's called Holy Live you can still download it she has also become a regular on some of the biggest stages leading out at Woman Thou Art Loosed so uh, you would know that from Bishop T.D. Jakes his conferences You've probably heard her on albums like Anthony Brown. Yeah, everybody knows Gay Arbuckle if they listen to gospel and praise and worship. But what you may not know about Gay Arbuckle is she is an entrepreneur and she has a few things cooking. I'm going to let her share that with you. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, my sister in Christ. And also, my music minister, Gay Arbuckle. Everybody, I am thrilled because I have my sister in Christ on here with me on the Culture Suit Podcast. And you know what? Hey, you want to say hi? Hey. It's, it's Gay Arbuckle, everybody. You Yay. probably know her because you have seen her on the platform at Woman Thou Art Loosed. You have probably, in fact, you probably try to sing it because so many people get online trying to sing this song, Miracles and Blessings. <laughs> <laughs> and she's laughing because she's seen them all. <laughs> hey, yes, come on. she's national recording artist, stellar nominated artist, but most importantly, she is my minister of music at Concord Church. Oh, bless you. I'm so excited to be here. I am so glad you are here, Sister Gay. I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I got you. (laughs) Yay! I got you. (laughs) There's so much to talk about, because you're, and I don't want to say not just, because that's a huge role that you have at the church, the worship and fine arts leader, right? Right, right. But then you're also recording, which makes you an entrepreneur, and then you have other entrepreneurial efforts going on. I do. You do. And you know, I make this joke a lot of times because uh, I like to like do pictures and videos. Mm-hmm. And since I've been doing the Get Your Note, and I always say, now, if this singing thing don't work out, <laughs> then I'll do this. Yes. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So. <laughs> but you found a way to do both. You've done vocal coaching. You've had conferences. You have albums now first of all before we go on we got to talk about this album that uvoc did and that's the united voices of concord yeah it you know what we did it um uh, probably about two years ago for new year's eve Mm -hmm. and um we just i wanted to do something that our church could really be proud of and call their own and so when we uh started the rehearsal it's funny during that time the weather was really kind of like this Mm -hmm. and uh, we almost didn't have it because a lot of churches were counseling around Mm -hmm. and uh pastor called and said hey i think everybody's counseling but then he called back and said hey we can do it and uh i think it's a great cd and for them to own it and say hey I'm yes. on there. You know, they may see their faces on there too. Like, that's me. I'm on the third row. So it's a great CD. It's a little bit of praise and worship. It's churchy music. Mm-hmm. So you've got a worship moment for about like, uh, it's uh, for a couple of minutes, just worship. It. So we want the CD, I, we want it to be something where people can listen to, not just now, mm-hmm. but even for years to come. Yes. And mm-hmm. what's the name of it? Give it to everybody and tell them where they can download or purchase. 
Uh, you can get it here at Concord Church. You can uh, call us, call in, and uh, get us to get you the CD. You know, I know a lot of people don't have CD players right now, but definitely support. Get it for Christmas. Get it yes. for Thanksgiving. So it's called Grace. That's what it's Grace, called. Grace, that's right. And you yes. know what? You will go in in your ride when you turn it on. Trust me, because I have. Good, good. <laughs> and you know what? We want it to be fun. So even though it's a church CD, mm -hmm. you know, we want kids to listen to it. And it's so funny when you get testimonies of different kids or you saying, I'm telling you, I really love the song because there's like a little lick at the end yeah. where they go, oh, my gosh, I like this. Yeah. So. And there's some the standards, some Concord standards in there. We thank yeah. you, Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> like that. We, we, you, you bring that out every church anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you know, I want people to get to know you. And the premise of this podcast, the whole thing, really is to kind of unravel my story through the stories of my friends that sit at the intersection of tech, culture, and business. So you yeah. are always using technology to get this music thing together, whether yeah. it's at church or it is, you know, the albums that you're doing. But then you're an entrepreneur too, but I, I need people to know who you are. But First, what do you say we have a culture soup moment? Okay. Awesome. All right, good. Okay. So, every year during Thanksgiving, I am reminded how church culture is so <laughs> pervasive on social media. In fact, it's black church culture. Would you agree? <laughs> I agree. Yes. Okay. And there's this one that resurfaces every year at Thanksgiving. But look at it. Look. Look! I got beans, creams, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, greens, raw, raw, beans, creams, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, turkey. Hey. You know what I'm talking about, beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes. Yes, chicken, turkey, exactly. chicken. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not the only one. There are tons of them. Yeah. And you've seen them. Why do you think that church, black church culture is so popular on social media? You know, it's, 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 uh, we can relate to it. Yeah. We, we do it, whether you're a AME, CME, Church of God in Christ, gospel, those stories, they connect us. Yeah. So, you know, although they're funny at the moment, you know, you think about it later and go, that was all right though. Yes. You know, yes. because <laughs> even when the whole thing came out with Shirley Caesar mm -hmm. and people were doing it, it, you start finding yourself going, that's funny about the way you go, hey. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, then somebody else put another kind of uh, music to it, and then yes. it turns into something else. Yes. You know? Right. So it, it was good, fun, clean. Yeah. Church, you know, and for those who probably don't go to church, they probably saw that and went, you know what, I might want to go. Right. You never know. You never know. <laughs> I feel that way, too. I mm -hmm. think it's because it's something that we've experienced, and it just connects with something inside of us. Exactly. Whether we're in church today or we went one day with grandmom a long time ago. Exactly. We get you it. Know. Yeah, I, I get it. And you know, yeah. there are other cultures that latched on. I remember seeing a little Asian family just taking it to the hill because they could relate to the idea and the culture of the, of the family and gathering around the, the table right. to eat a bountiful <laughs> blessing, right? Yeah. And I think, too, uh, because we're missing that connection family time mm -hmm. because everybody's so busy. You got your telephone, kids going to football practice. Um, you're working overtime, right. single parent, married. It doesn't matter. And then some of those things, when you sit down, you guys can have that good. I can remember when my mother and I did blah, blah, blah. Right. So you get to take something away uh, when you when you leave your family as opposed to, I just didn't have a good childhood. But yeah. it's like, oh, I remember the laughs. And, mm -hmm. and whether you thought it was funny then, even when you get in trouble, you can still sit down and go, man, I was scared. And then you, yes. your mother, y'all understand each other. You yes. know what I mean? So and there's a whole better. food culture there, right? Exactly. Not just about Everything. gathering around with your family, even if they're dysfunctional. You yeah. just know that it's the time of the year that you're going to get some good grub. <laughs> <laughs> Right? That's right. I reminded names like Shirley Caesar remind me of James Cleveland. Uh, now, he kind of had a role in something to do with you. You want to talk about that? 
Yeah, you know, when I think I was probably in my 20s, I do not want to date myself. Okay, How well. Ever. Here we go. <laughs> so uh, we went to the GMW, GMW workshop. So that's Gospel Music Workshop of America. Right. And uh, there was a night where they had people to sing on the program. And um, they he introduced me at, it was in New Orleans. I, I won't forget it because that was my very first one. And uh, just to see this icon, yeah. this person who you grew up listening to, this mm-hmm. person who wrote wonderful music that you're singing to his music, and then to go on stage and go, this is you. Yeah. And uh, it's just amazing. Uh, those moments, not everybody gets those opportunities. Not everybody does. Right. So to get it, you need to cherish those moments. So for people that you even see now that uh, – or legends you mm-hmm. need to honor them yes absolutely well he mm-hmm. obviously saw something in you you want to tell that part oh so so i get up there to sing i'm scared and i do i really love the lord thank you lord yes. for bringing that and and it just so happened the guy who wrote the song he had just passed oh wow so as the lord would have it for me to honor him, not mm-hmm. knowing this happened. Mm-hmm. So through that, you know, I get an opportunity to sing for other GMW recordings and for probably about two, two or three. And uh, just to be asked is a blessing. Yeah. But, you know, you got to hold your own. So thank God I was in good voice. Yes. And, uh, just the opportunity alone is a blessing. That is so awesome. So how long after that did miracles and blessings happen? Oh, wow. So that was maybe, I don't know, probably eight or nine years Mm -hmm, after that. mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was so amazing. When we did that CD, uh, my mother would tell me, now make sure when you do a CD, you can do the choir, Mm -hmm. but make sure you do some by yourself. So I wrote that song, not even thinking um, that I was a writer. I just it was a prayer. Actually, I would get up and pray, Lord, I thank you for this day that was not promised to me. Oh. And people didn't really understand that it was really, really a prayer. Mm-hmm. And then as I begin to write, it's like word lyrics just begin to come oh, wow. one after another. And it wasn't a hard thinking, like, huh, come back to the table, leave, come flowed. back. It did. It yeah. truly, truly flowed. And then to hear people sing it, you know, in different areas, you go on YouTube, you see it. Or just to hear the testimonies on how the song really blessed them. Yes. You can't you can't beat that. Yeah, you can't beat it at all. And you know what? I've been a witness to some of the tributes. <laughs> when people <laughs> decide, let's honor gay. And then somebody's <laughs> going to get up and sing Miracle and Blessings. And you kind of brace yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, right. What, imagine this. I go into a service and I don't know what happened, but. I had to leave to go out for a second. As soon as I left out, I heard, da, 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 da. and I went, oh, my God. I was glad I was out. And yeah. Let me tell you why. Because everybody would have been looking at me. Yeah, totally. So I was like, yeah. So and I was like, you don't mm-hmm. want to have those reactions. No. No. But the young lady, she did great. I'm sure she did. I'm still glad I was out, though. Yeah, but because you, you never know. Exactly. You never, ever know. Mm-hmm. Sister Gay, you've had some big moments, and I'm going to come around to that that one moment where there were some pretty hefty elected officials in the in the building, and it was a real somber, somber situation where the the police officers had passed away. Yeah. So I know that Pastor Carter was one of the main preachers who was kind of leading this charge for racial reconciliation in the community, and he's still mm-hmm. at the forefront of that. And so it kind of made sense that when he came, he'd bring his choir, right? Right. And so, needless to say, this was a national event. I'll tell you where I was. I was at work okay. on the 11th floor at AT&T headquarters, which is actually only steps away from where the police officers were shot. And I okay. knew people who were literally in that protest who had to run for their lives. So mm. it impacted us in a lot of ways. And when this the service came on, the funeral, we had all the, and this is big because in corporate communications at AT&T, we keep it on CNN, we keep it on MSNBC because we're tracking news, right? For right. the business, but we stopped to watch this funeral 
And lo and behold, the choir gets up and I'm like, y'all, I'm nudging people. That's my choir. That's my choir. That's my music minister. That's my music minister. And you opened your mouth and Barack Obama was there. Michelle Obama was there. W. George W. Bush was there. Right, right. And you sang. You sang a Richard Smallwood song, right? Total praise. Total praise. I did. Let me tell you, um, I remember, that's why I always tell people, don't stop dreaming. We think just because we get a certain age that, oh, well, Mm -hmm. my time is up. You know, Sarah didn't have a baby until she was well (laughs) older. Yeah. So I remember watching videos of him, and I wanted to go when uh, when he first got office, uh, but then I was thinking, now, Lord, you know, I would really love to sing mm-hmm. for the president of the United States. Mm-hmm. I would really, really love it. And I'm thinking I'm going to yeah. go there. So when he got the second yeah, time, I, got went, a chance. I got time. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Is right. that why you voted yeah, for him? So I get- <laughs> We got him in there. I meant that. (laughs) Call my name. That's too funny. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, so we get this call and so they say, well, the president is coming to, uh, Dallas. And I'm thinking, I don't know why I didn't think president of the United States. I don't know what I was thinking. So it's like, get the choir ready. I was like, okay. So, you know, everybody, we had to, everybody Mm -hmm. had to sign something and, you know, you had, it was really serious. And, uh, that night I was pulling out and I heard the Lord say, remember you say you want to sing for the president of the United States. Not only did I not have to go to DC, he was saying, I brought him to you. To your house. Brought him to you. (laughs) And I wasn't, Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to. And then all of a sudden, when I heard the Lord say that, I was like, hey, y'all, I'm going to, I had yeah. already talked total praise, but I said, hey, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and lead it. And they was like, oh, well, you okay, know, because we love here, and Sister Gay. I, it just made sense. Oh, my God. When I sat down, mm-hmm. that's when it hit Michelle. I was like, yes. God, you did it. You did it. Whoever yeah. is out there talking about, man, my time is up, or Ow, yeah. my leg is this, or my arm, or my head, or I'm not in my prime. No. Don't stop dreaming. I yes. really mean that. I mean, dreams do. really do come true. And whatever it is, I don't care if it's, it's just to get your own mm-hmm. business as a hairstylist. If you want to style yeah. people clothing, no. don't stop. We we quit when we don't see it at a certain age because we think mm-hmm. I'm gonna have this by no, this time. You cannot you are gauge. right about that. You can't change it. So I'm like, I, it happened, and I walked up, I boo hooed, I cried. I well, said, listen, I the entire eleventh floor of AT and T was frozen. And when I looked up mm. and saw Michelle get up first, because she got up before anybody, when when Michelle Yo <laughs> turned around. And looked at you, and then Barack <laughs> got up, and then W got up. I said, "Oh, she, she is anointed." Yeah, and I got a hug. Yeah, because yes. she did like this, and I was gonna walk, and but the security people were over in the corner. <laughs> Am I, I supposed like, to? Mm. Right. And then she did like this, like, "Come yes. on, yes, <laughs> yes." I'm like, wow. yes, I hug you. What oh a moment! Yeah. I was so proud. I was a so proud. Moment. You just. They needed to tell me to Thank be quiet. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, here's the crazy thing. I didn't know it was oh, going to be on was CNN. Everywhere. Yeah. I didn't know. I saw the cameras up, but I just thought maybe somebody just recorded forever. And I could feel my purse vibrating. <laughs> my phone was in my purse vibrating. They were texting purse. you in People the middle of the solo. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Well, when I okay. sat down, I could feel it. I just, I kept, oh, somebody yeah. told me on my I phone. waited at least for you to post on social media, and then I, you know. Because I'm like, how you, <laughs> they're still on, <laughs> on the stage. <laughs> that was quite a moment. But I got to go back to another moment. Okay. Almost 15 years ago, Sister Gay, I don't even know if you knew it was my first day at Concord. I hadn't even joined Concord yet. And John Thompson, who is a photographer at NBC5 right now, uh-huh. shout out to John. He's a deacon at Concord. I knew With him the because, glasses, right? Yes. I knew him because we worked together at Channel 4 back in the day. Okay. And I was visiting Concord and he saw me and he's like, oh my goodness, I need you to meet some people. I'm like, okay. 
in short order, I met you. He walked me right into your office. He's like, she sings, she sings. I'm like, oh my goodness. It's <laughs> a little much for my first day, right? And sing very well, everyone. Thank Just let you. me let I appreciate you know. That. I appreciate that. Well, I learned a lot from you. We're going to get into that too. But yes, yes. But I met you that day, walked in your office, and he was the pastor's, um, what do you call, armor bearer during that time. Okay. And at some point, because he lived right around the corner from my parents, he was like, do you mind taking me over to the pastor's house because I need to switch cars or something like that? I'm like, okay, this is way too much. I'm going to the (laughs) pastor's house the first (laughs) It's just too much. But literally, I took him over there, dropped him off. I didn't go in. I didn't, nothing. He got in his car and did whatever he had to do. But that was like an amazing time. We were in the legacy um, facility, which is our old church. We don't like to call it old. That's why we call it legacy. There you go. Right. And we built Faith, which is the brand new one. If you haven't been to Concord, Dallas, it's phenomenal. It is a wonderful place to, to worship. And amazingly, even though it looks big, it's pretty intimate. Mm-hmm. Don't you agree? I totally agree. When I got here, my kids were small. And uh, I and when they got, they just saw from the church we came from, which was a lot smaller, mm-hmm. to where we are now. They were like, that's too big. But they rallied around. You need me to help you with your children. Yes. What do you need me to help you mm-hmm. with? And what can I do? And I was thinking... These people are really lovable. Yeah. And it they really, really are. Yeah. And I remember when you came in. You remember? And the same, yeah. <laughs> and the same bubbly person that you are even right now, you were even then. Yes, ma'am. I try, you, you know, even then. I try to keep it, keep it bubbly. <laughs> I try to keep it you bubbly. You have changed. <laughs> It's so true. Well, listen, you know, there are a couple of people, and I've sung with all sorts of folks, but there are a couple of people who have had an impact on my sound, you know, even exposing me to different things. The first lady, her name is Donna Dandino, and I don't know if I ever mentioned her to you, but Donna Dandino kind of had to trick me because in the beginning, I didn't want to sing for anybody. Just keep me in the back. (laughs) <laughs> and I was fine but she yeah. tricked me she did some type of dessert theater theater was like a dinner theater she was the music teacher at first before she was a choir person at my school okay. and she had us doing all these show tunes and I was so excited and then she said we're going to do this dessert theater we're going to invite all the parents I'm like oh, okay I can't do that because if the parents hear me they're going to want me to sing some more and I don't want to do that in front of people <laughs> right <laughs> Right. So I didn't tell them. I didn't take the permission slip home. Didn't do any of it. And we were there that night ser- serving desserts and singing tunes from musicals and all of this stuff, having a good time. And when mm-hmm. it was time for me to get up and do my solo, which I thought I was going to do off the radar, my parents walk in. They walked in. I'm in shock. I can't stop because I'm up there singing. <laughs> so I went on and sang. And after it was over, my mom and, you know, my mom and my dad. My mom was like, Shelly, we didn't know you could sing. I'm like, oh, here we go. (laughs) This is the beginning of the end. And so Miss Dandino walks up and says, well, I don't know why you didn't tell your parents. So I just made sure and called all the parents so they would know. And I'm like, oh, "Oh my gosh. And then she said, and it's because I want to coach you. And this lady was on Broadway. She was on Broadway before she came. And she's the one that taught me classical music and show tunes and all of this stuff. I wasn't even singing at church that much at all. I was really trying to keep that low. So by the time I came to you, I had, you know, worked with Kirk Franklin on a fluke. I think I told you he was our gospel choir director at TCU. Crazy. Crazy. And then, you know, God's property and all that kind of stuff. So when I walked into Concord, I had been with devotion. I had done some other things, but I was like, I could really learn under Gay Arbuckle. Because I knew miracles right. and blessings. <laughs> and I had been visiting, you know, on and off before. Yeah. But I was like, you know, if she would give me an opportunity, I could really learn from you. And you know what? We used to do, ooh, you remember how we used to do three services? Oh, my gosh. Like, like we do now. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. There are, a little, there are a few more people on the team. So y'all can kind of shuffle, right? Well, yeah, you're right. But back then there were nine of us. And you told us all y'all got to lead. You remember that? Oh, did. <laughs> I still do. And she missed Y'all that. Y'all don't know where me out. Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh-uh. And you know what? 
she would tell us, hey, get your note. <laughs> this oh is where it God. comes from, people. You got to go to her Instagram, hashtag oh get your God. note. And you, she would say, get on top of that note, and you would pull your hair just like that. Ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't done that in so long. Oh my gosh, you are so right. You are yes. bringing it back to my remembrance. It's true. It's true. I'm telling you, you know, the blending and everything that we had to do as a praise team. But you know what? The flip side of that was we were your backup singers. We went everywhere with you. <laughs> we did. It was you know, fun too. Even for the recording. Yes. Y'all was y'all were there. We but were there. y'all had now, let me just tell everybody, too, yeah. they may not know about you. Since you oh, give me boy, Christ, I'm so giving you yours. Oh. Whenever soprano note was needed, that need to be stretched, if it had to go, we modulate to another key. <laughs> Michelle always had her note. Yeah, I would definitely. Always. If it I couldn't do anything strong. else, I'm going to get my note. <laughs> oh, my God. That is so true. <laughs> always had it. <laughs> and you would give me, you that, you give me that look like it's time. <laughs> and you would say, "Okay, tone it down now." But when I look at you, go. <laughs> I mean, and don't hold nothing back. Come on with it. And and you did it every time, Michelle. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Well, so, you know that's 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 because I had great training. And you know what? We weren't gonna get anything half done past you. No. 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 You know, I think in all that we do, uh, whatever we do, we. We, you want to push people to where they even think that they probably don't even have the strength to go. Yeah. So we never know what we can do until someone says, yes, you can, and they make you do it. Now, in the process, sometimes it's frustrating because mm-hmm. you're like, again? Yeah. I already did that. Oh, that's too much. But mm-hmm. then at the end of the day, you realize, you know what? It was needed. Yeah, absolutely. Was- well, you poured into me, and I'm grateful for it. Bless and you are just a blessing to our church. You're a blessing to the entire community. I mean, I see how the gospel industry just embraces you and you go a lot of places. Where you been recently? You know, um, well, I was in South Carolina, but I have traveled to like Africa. I did Mm -hmm. uh, a concert there at a church. Let me tell you, those people there, they really know how to worship. For real. Uh, We we worship here, but they are like non-stop, yeah. like sweating one more time. They've been yeah. through it, gang. They've been through it. Oh, my you God. Know? They love it. Mm-hmm. And they were just, they just embraced it just to a point of that you go back, when you come back to the States, you go, I got to take it up. Yeah. I got to pick it up. I, I just can't stay at this place. And then when you love what you do, you know, you like, I, I want everybody, I want everybody to win, like they yeah. say. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that trip to Africa, I think, inspired that cut on Holy Live. Madase. Yes. Yes. Madase. 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 (laughs) Y'all, Holy Live. That was a good one. I was sitting down there going, you know what? What does that mean? All right, I'm writing a song. Wait a minute. I was ready. And, and then y'all danced to it. Yes, you had it moves. Was really good. We had choreography. And even the pastor got in on it. He did. Yes. He did. Oh he my was goodness. shot like, go. Yeah. Yes, let's go. <laughs> it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, you got some things coming up. But before we talk about a day with gay, tell us more about Get Your Notes so people can know what it is and how to follow you. Okay. And so. Get your note is it? I, I, I when I would go out on social get media, your note. I, you need to say it right. <laughs> oh, get your hashtag. Note. <laughs> get yo yo why oh no no there you go there you go <laughs> just right. so they're not Thank confused. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be typing and get your note. Okay, right. that's not it. <laughs> that ain't it. Yo note. yo. There you go. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it really started because I just wanted to do something really fun and uplifting for people to wake up in the morning and just enjoy. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's been like two years now. Can you believe it? Yeah. Two years I'm doing it. And, um, it's, uh, we, I either sing a hymn with mm-hmm. someone or I'll sing like an older church tune yeah. with someone of three people. Mm-hmm. One person I've even done it with, um, 
kids. Yes, I've the done babies it with are cute. puppets. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've done it with the uh, sign line, the sign interpreter. So I'm just trying to reach everybody it. with that. And it's just been catching on. So when I see the reports at the end, like, oh, thank you. I love when you do these. I'm looking for these. So I'm doing what not just people think that they, they were famous. Yeah. I do it with just people, just regular people regular here. People. Right. And the, and the great thing about it is that people see it and go, oh, there's so-and-so. Yeah. I haven't seen them in 25 years. Yes. Or, oh, there goes Miss So-and-so. I didn't know she could sing. So, it's awesome. yeah. It's, it's awesome. Just a your day. And you know, some mornings you get up and you post them pretty early. My yeah. alarm will go off and, you know, I'm checking my phone like I probably shouldn't. Every productivity <laughs> rule in the world is broken. Checking yeah. the phone. But some of the first things I see is to get your note. Yeah. And to hear that him, that Negro spiritual, whatever it might be, it just gets your spirit so happy. And yeah. it's a great way to start the day. I love it. And I got to tell you, it is so authentic to you. And I think that's what people need to understand is they're like intentionally building their personal brands or, you know, these mm -hmm. types of things. You need to do things that are in your wheelhouse that mm -hmm. are authentic to you. And of course you're creative with it and you brought people in on it. And now you got a hashtag. <laughs> Look, this is how I came across it. Jackie <laughs> Reed from WNBC yeah. New York is like, Oh my gosh, I just love this. She comments. Cause she was a friend of mine on Instagram. I'm like, wait a minute. And I, Wrote her, I was like, that's my minister of music. Cause she regrammed it. <laughs> she reposted it. And I start following. I was like, start scrolling through. I was like, she's been doing this for years. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> this is so awesome. And at that point you call me. Yeah. Yeah. You were like, you next. I'm like, Oh Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wasn't even trying to do that. <laughs> oh yeah. But it was good. It was good. It it was very good. Yeah. Very, very good. Yeah. It's okay. been catching on. So I'm really uh -huh. glad about that. And so then there are some people now who call and ask. I'm hey, sure. How do I get to pitched. be on your Yes. Yeah. Yes, you're getting pitched. So we're gonna work on that. Get you some sponsors and some other things, right? Claim Hi, it. Me. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Come through. Come through with the sponsorship. Yes. Yes. Now, a day with gay. All right. Talk about that. So I want to spend time with worship leaders, minister of music, and I just want an intimate conversation to hear their hearts. And then they can hear mine as well. And I want to do it because sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And because with me leading worship and traveling through my travels, people are asking questions like, how do you do this? How do you do this? And I'm thinking, well, why don't I just do like a workshop? Y'all all come in. You can ask me questions, yeah. you know, and I think in that it will help them to uh, whether it's a small church or a big church. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, worship goes I, goes all around. Mm -hmm. So I want to teach them. I can't teach them how to worship God, right. but I can give them little techniques. Mm -hmm. I can teach them how to select songs for your voice. Mm -hmm. I can be a vocal instructor. I can help them how to, you know, create ground rules or covenant to help everybody stay on. That's good. On, That's good. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to talk to them and just see first, see where they are. And then I can kind of like maybe infuse some of my suggestions and yeah. help them out with that. And then for those who are young, even for the kids and the babies, I want them to come as well. Yeah, that's awesome. So when do you think you might kick off or are you still working on the day? I'm still working on that, but I know 2020, I'm really looking for that. But then I want to travel. So okay. I don't want to just be here in Texas. Right. I want to. You know, maybe they have a team of people can get together, have me come down and we just have a weekend. So maybe that Friday will be uh, teaching mm -hmm. and then that Saturday we'll do a worship night. Oh, I love that. I love, love that. From one song to another. Yeah. I like it that you're going to take it to the people across the country. I would love to. So if you're out there. Yes. I am here. There you go. <laughs> Y'all heard it here first on the Culture Soup. She is calling for you. Yes. Sister Gay Arbuckle, it has Bless been such you. a pleasure. This is good. This is fun. Yes, it wasn't scary at all, was it? No. No, I tell people all the time, I create a safe space. And just because it's unscripted does not mean it has to be scary. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for making me feel comfortable because, yeah, you, you're right. I'm like, what you going to ask me? <laughs> <laughs> this is not 60 minutes <laughs> there are no exposés to be had here is that looking, that looking behind me talking with my lawyer yeah, yeah. right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
this was so good. Good. Well, thank you so much, Sister K. And if thank ever you need anything, you know, you can call me. I know. And I appreciate you so much. You are a blessing. Thank you oh, so much. Bless you. Thank you mm. so much. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. 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 What an extraordinary conversation with national recording artist, award-winning national recording artist, Gay Arbuckle. You know what? I confess, you can tell when I know somebody and I've known them for a long time. We go for a little bit, don't we? (laughs) Yes, we do. That's all right. That's my sister. All right, y'all. Next week is Thanksgiving. We're going to do another Throwback Thursday. Take the day off. But we're going to have some great content. So make sure that you stay in touch. Because some of you have joined us later in the journey. And there's some of these episodes that you haven't heard. So we're going to reach all the way back for a really good one. Find us online at theculturesoup.com. On Instagram and Twitter at The Culture Soup, And on Facebook at The Culture Soup Podcast. Until next week. The Culture Soup Podcast is a production of No Size Communication, LLC. The liquor hit! Look! The Culture Soup Podcast is a registered trademark of No Silos Communications, LLC. Beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, turkeys, rats. Beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, lamb, lamb.